The second and final day of Pope Francis' meeting with the Cardinals left them on a positive note. We are all very happy. Here we are more than 150 cardinals from all over the world giving ideas to the Pope about the new reform of the Roman Curia in a climate of total freedom with a very fraternal atmosphere, very proactive, very supportive. It generates a lot of hope. The cardinals reflected on an important document that regulates the Curia, Predicate Evangelium, which is the result of nine years of work. The document is meant to serve as the starting point for a renewed curia, one that is more missionary, synodal, economically transparent and less bureaucratic, so that communication with the diocese around the world can be more open. The Constitution does not only pertain to the reformation of the Roman Curia, but also to the relationship between the Curia, which serves the Pope and the bishops of the world. We are on the path of synodality. It seems to me that this is the fundamental issue, and I think Pope Francis's greatest effort right now is this. There is still a lot of work to be done. For example, the Pope will have to appoint some new heads of dicasteries. The Cardinals, however, understand that this meeting is not a pre-conclave, yet they recognize that being able to be together helps to get to know each other better and strengthen ties. The meeting of the Pope and the Cardinals ended with this Mass in St. Peter's Basilica. There, Pope Francis invited the Cardinals not to be carried away by the prestige of their office and not to lose the ability to be amazed at the wonder of the Church. Ripeto la domanda. Caro fratello, cara sorella, che stiamo tutti insieme qui, come va la tua capacità di stupirci? O ti sei abituato o abituata tanto che l'hai persa? Sei capace di stupirti ancora? At the end of the Cardinals' meetings, time was also devoted to preparing for the next great jubilee in Rome, dedicated to hope, which will be in 2025.